As we approach this first course on call options and put options, I want to end it with um, a few examples of what you can do with stocks and options together. So many people like stocks. Perhaps they've not understood the power of options. Um, or if they do, they would like to combine their stock activity with some options, which is actually a very, very profitable uh, combination. If you can use stocks, if you love stocks, if you uh, want to own stocks, then you can use stocks with options in very creative ways uh, to play safe uh, income strategies. You, these strategies also uh, require a lot less monitoring. So if you're a busy professional, if you have a full-time job, and um, if you don't have time to look at the markets on a regular basis, um, you can use these stock and option combo strategies uh, to create some very creative uh, strategies, and uh, you can produce regular monthly income. So, so in the next couple of lectures, that's what I want to do. I want to show some examples of how you can use stocks with options. And then, of course, you also know that options are used as a hedging instrument. So I do want to show that feature as well, how you can hedge a particular stock by using options. So if you recall, in the beginning of this course, when we covered call options, uh, I said that one of the things you can do with, with options that you cannot do with stocks is in options you can structure contracts that are very different from what the stock is trading at. And that's true, and I think you've seen some examples already. But what you can also do is um, structure these trades in a manner that it either produces a regular monthly income or it produces a certain outcome that you would want if you either had the stock already or if you wanted to buy the stock. So the first example I'm going to use is we want to use an option strategy where we would like to buy a certain stock at a certain price and no more than that. And at the same time, we want to get into that contract today. So this price is going to be very different from what the current price of Apple is. So let's say Apple is trading at 466 today. And let's say we wanted to buy Apple at 425, at 430. We want to buy it only at that price and nothing more. And at that price, we are perfectly fine with owning the stock. So you're looking at the stock for the long term. And you don't really mind if uh, once you purchase the stock at, say, 425 or 430, uh, even if it goes down after that, it, it, you're not really concerned about that because you're picking this up for the long term. And so that's got to be your intention with this strategy. If that is not the intention, then you have to um, do a completely different set of uh, adjustments and things like that. But if you wanted to own Apple at 425 and nothing more, then you would be willing to pick up the stock at 425 and you would want to keep it for the long term. And perhaps if it went down further to 400, you might pick up some more. So that's so. this is a strategy by using stocks and options where you want to pick up stock at a very good attractive price that you deem it's very attractive. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So in fact, we just looked at this example in the previous one. It's the same thing. But you probably did not think about it as a stock uh, buying strategy. But that's what we're going to do. So if you look at the 425 put option, this is the one that we were looking at. And let's say you wanted to buy 10 contracts of this. And you know why would you choose 10 contracts? Which means you, you wanted to pick up 8,000 shares. Well, maybe that's a little too much because 1,000 shares of Apple is going to be 466. So to show you this example, I'm going to make it one contract. So let's say you wanted to pick up 100 shares of Apple. And if you were given the opportunity, you wanted to pick it up at a price of 425 and nothing more. So what you would do is you would sell one put option at that strike price, 425. Now, why would you sell a strike price? Because that's the strike price where you want to pick up Apple. So think about the put option rights and obligations. The put option buyer will have the right to sell Apple to you 
at the price of 425. And you as the seller, you have the obligation to buy Apple at the price of 425 by the date of expiry, which is 28 days away. And you have the obligation to buy 100 shares. So if in case if this condition gets satisfied, then you have to have to pick up this 100 shares. So and if you if you're putting a strategy like this, then obviously, you know, all of that and you're willing to put that money into the stock and you want to pick it up for the long term. So that's the general idea. So if you sell this one uh, contract at the 425 put, that's your obligation. Your obligation is to buy uh, this contract, this, uh, you know, the 100 shares at the strike price of 425. And whereas your counterparty, the buyer of this option, has the right to sell it to you. So why would he sell it to you at 425? Only if Apple actually went down and let's say it went below 425, let's say it went to 420 or 415, then he would want to exercise his right and he would want to sell this Apple share to you, uh, shares to you at 425. And as far as you're concerned, you're okay with that because remember, your strategy is you want to pick up this stock at 425 and nothing more and you're prepared for Apple to go a little bit further down in you know if it does that if it doesn't do that that's great now first of all if it you know if you don't get exercised if you don't get assigned on this contract rather then you're going to keep this premium because when you're selling options you're going to collect premium so right now if you look at the risk profile that's exactly what it is and this is the example that we just saw in the previous lecture so this is a put option. You're selling this put option at the 425 strike price. Now, Apple is here at 468. If Apple, in the next 28 days, does not come close to 425, you get to keep this premium. So how much is this premium? For one contract, it's going to be $235. But you can see how it can scale. So if you put 10 contracts, it'll be 2350 so whatever your your position scale is, you're going to be able to keep this uh, premium if Apple never drops to 425. And if it does drop, then you're going to get assigned on this contract and you're going to have to pick up the 100 shares. Now, this is exactly what you wanted anyway. So the only negative with this strategy is if Apple actually goes down to 425 and then it goes down even further, like say 400 or 390, then the stock that you own will be looking at a paper loss. Now, you know, you don't have to worry about the option losses because, you know, you're going to pick up the stock. So all of this unlimited losses doesn't matter because you're going to pick up the stock at 425. So the negative is that you'll be holding stock and th that stock will be showing a paper loss. But that's okay. You've, pr you, you know, you've prepared for it. You've thought this out and you're okay with that because you want to hold Apple for the long term, whether it's 12 months or 24 months, because you feel Apple's going to go up to 500, perhaps 600. Uh, we know that Apple hit a high of 700. So this is a great price to pick up a fantastic company. And you're getting it at 425. And then your actual cost of the shares is actually going to be 422.29 because you're going to get this premium and that's yours. So you have to actually uh, reduce this amount from, from 425 to get your real cost basis, which is 422.71, 75, whatever. So this is a great way to pick up stock at prices that are perfectly acceptable to you. And you would only do this if you were going to pick up Apple for the long term. And if you were willing to buy the shares, you don't have to worry about all this unlimited loss at all because you're going to pick up shares at 425 and that's it. So this is a strategy that many people use to pick up stock at prices that they like. And they pick it up because they want to have a long term outlook. They're bullish on the stock in the long term, but they don't want to pay the current price. They want to pay a good, you know, 10% less than that. And, that, and that's great. And if, if it never comes here, you get to keep this premium. The next month in the April, you do the same thing. You put a price depending on where Apple is at that time. Let's say Apple went up to 490. Then perhaps you want to move your strike up from 425 to maybe 440 or 450. 
Um, the point is you pick up enough premium to make the trade worth your while. And if Apple does fall down to that price, then you're perfectly happy picking up the stock. So this is one st strategy where you can use options and stocks together to pick up stocks at prices that are perfectly acceptable to you and you want to hold the stock for the long term. In the next lecture, we're going to show uh, something that is, you know, somewhat opposite of this strategy. Uh, again, but using stocks and options. I'll see you there. Thank you.